paper boy, paper boy. Are we starting? Yeah, yeah, I got the paper boy. Are we starting? Are we like? No, we have the intro. Are we starting with the track or intro? Yeah, we got intro. Ready for it? We intro. We intro with the track. Jungle beats holler at me here with Alexander Sanjaris. I'm Alexander Man. This is Scott Hudson. Hey. AKA Ezra Allen. Hey. <laughs> yeah, Ezra Allen is his uh, artist name. Uh, Scott makes music, and it's good. S- Scott was a part of the previous radio station that we were a part of as well. So him and Chris, uh, we're kind of transitioning into helping build this warehouse. Action and this, yeah, building this warehouse. As you can see, this is not the warehouse we're trying to build now. This is a temporary. It's significantly bigger than this place. Thank you. It's like super big. This is his bar that he works at. Um, we're just trying to hustle and get anything done by any means necessary. Jungle Beats. Holler at me. We doing Mini Coop's latest album. Now, m- most of them don't know who Mini Coop is, so can we, you guys introduce yeah. who Mini Coop is? We, uh, look, the, the funny thing about Mini Coop is, for me, it was a it was a super cool instance that I met Mini Coop. I was at a party. But who is Mini Coop? He. Well, I'll it's get there. So, stars. Thank you. So basically, I was at a party in in Melbourne, and I basically went, "Look, I do some pod, like, do some like hip hop radio, uh, and you know, I do like a Melbourne a Melbourne based Australian music show as well with some people." And I went, sort of look, hey. Like, you know, blah, 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 I can't talk about rap. And so I was like, oh, man, you know, like, a lot about American underground rap, like, but I know a lot about Australian underground rap. And I was like, mate, I know, like, a shit ton about Australian underground rap as well. It's like, oh, well, like, Mini Coop's here. Like, he's this, you know, Australian rapper. And I was like, yeah. I never heard of him. I sat down with him, talked to the guy, fucking sweet. We, like, I showed, showed him my really early stuff. Real and then early he, shit. And, like, real early. Like, this was months ago. This was, like, I was probably, like, a year ago now. And then I went, look, here's my really early shit. And he's like, oh man, like sweet. Like it sounds like you're, you're doing a good job. And like, you know, like gave me a bunch of tips. And he was like, oh, well, here's this stuff coming up with my upcoming mixtape. I was like, sweet. And then one day I said, I went, oh, do you sin hip hop? He's like, oh, you mean like Alex Mann sin hip hop? We're like, oh, yeah. So this man here, Alex Mann, has been interviewing Mini Coop for. I've been interviewing probably three times. Three. And every time, every time I catch up with him and go to his gigs, like, that's why I've, like, I've been there since when he dropped, when he dropped Up and Adam. So that was like his first three years, sort of three yeah. four years ago. And I fucking love that that project. Then he dropped, I think, two EPs till it rains or He dropped I think he's done three mixtapes, which yeah. are like between twelve to six tracks. And he long. had the boy from Mars, he had the chosen was it chosen? Chosen was it was an EP mixtape. Yep, chosen EP. So I, I fucked with everything he's done so far. I mean, it seems like he's taking more of a bit of a pop approach. So I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about it, but nonetheless, I'm going to support the fuck out of this because I believe that he is a fuckload of talent and he deserves to be heard a lot more. He, he's, he's an interesting dude. The, the thing that to get across about Miniku is that he's just generous. Like he's, as, like a, as a person, and like super charitable, and he just sort of like, every person who's met him has been like, this guy's incredible, it's just a person. And then like he can rap, like really well. He can rap? He's, you but didn't, didn't, know how to, didn't want to pay for beats, didn't want to, um, like had to work for a studio, or have to collaborate, so he self, he's self-produced because he taught himself how to produce. Uh, and then uh, he just everything he does is basically he only just started getting mix and masters from other people because he was like oh look I just can't do this to the standard that I need to and now every, every feature he's got to him he's got like a, on tours he supported Futuristic shout out Futuristic yeah. American rapper internationally like huge like has like every I think he's his most recent music video hit 30 million views like Futuristic is massive he came to Melbourne and him and uh, Clue is his like buddy supported yeah, Mini Coop is Right. Yeah, he's doing. He's doing incredibly well. He's like, um, yeah. He's just everything he's done is is him or him, and you know, he's worth every worth your penny, worth your penny. Let's motherfucking get into it. All right. Well, this is uh. So this is Lift Off, which is his new album. Yep. Uh, it's I don't, ten. I don't, look I don't really. I don't really listen to much Australian hip hop music, so we'll see how this goes. Um, I'm gonna have to give my honest, oh, say, objective man. feedback. As much on as this. I fuck with this guy's music, I've heard this a bit more popular. So even if I don't like it. We'll see how I do. Actually, the big news about this one is that uh, a big Americ- a big Australian rapper, 360, is probably the biggest Australian rapper uh, as far as like reach, is on this album. This is a big deal for Mini Coop because it's one of his like idols. All right. Um, but we'll start with Fine uh, by Mini Coop, which is featured by Alana W. So I'll All right, let's go. Mini Coop, Jungle Come Beats, on. holler at me. Lift, motherfucking off. <laughs> Yeah, so that's new Mini Coop. 
well, the, uh, Mini Coop's diverse, so that's that's no. that's Mini Coop on this project. It actually reminded me like the first bit, like not in terms of the song, but in terms of the way he used his voice. Like, remember "I" by Kendrick Lamar, the very first version, the way that he raised the pitch of it and the way that he that reminded me like the very yeah. first because Mini Coop it sounded like he raised his pitches a bit. He had the voice going like that was that was cool. I mean, at the chorus, I wasn't too sure about because it was a bit poppy, but when he like he switched up a fair bit, the guitar was on point. It was a pretty well polished track. Was that a single? That is, that was one of the. So he's released three singles: one Makes after sense. the fact and two before. So he's yeah, yeah, released yeah. Um, "Home" uh, with Mo Louie, which comes yeah, up later. Yeah. That's the. This is like the, the. He described this track as being the in between between "Home" and like his other stuff because mm -hmm. uh, "Home" is really poppy, uh, and then this track is kind of like still technically like technically hip hop. So like yeah. he's rapping in quite a tender way. Yeah. Whereas yeah, yeah. Um, "Home," you'll hear it, and it's very. Evanescence of a, a local Melbourne rapper called, well, Australian rapper called Illy, who's just super, super, super poppy. Um, yeah. But yeah, so this is like, it's, uh, I think this album kind of diverses a bit more, but what Mini Cooper's really good at is he releases music that is like sometimes metal, sometimes like soul, sometimes yeah. oh, like, really? okay. like he's super he diverse. He does super everything. Because this is very radio friendly, very upbeat. Um, yeah, just very, very, it's safe. It's, yeah. it's just, it's just a, well, yeah, I feel like this this is definitely like if he wants to step into like more of the spotlight in terms of especially radio, this is a great way to start off. And then from then on, once he has the attention, once he has mm. the more fans, he's like, cool, now I can do with all these other sounds, I got people's attention. But you can, uh, again, you can do it the other way as well. Like you, you can start off obscure, you But he's tried doing the other way, I feel. He's been around for three, four years, released mm. five bodies of work where he's been oh, unique. Okay. So like, it, I think this one was very much that um, right. he wanted to be think a bit more like I just from like vague things I think this track does deviate a bit from pop but yeah like it was a whole idea of like he's done this for a while it's very weird coming from Kendrick and like recording Kendrick and Drake now to go into Mini Coop <laughs> like fuck <laughs> like, like, big um, big names to follow up but uh yeah no he's um yeah it's good I think I, I mean I haven't had the full album because I've been waiting to what do this but uh next? we got just saying um I don't think this has oh there, sorry there was there was another um Another single with a, a, an actual. He has a whole bunch. He has an international feature. This is a guy called Ahay, which comes up later. Yeah. Um, but this is just saying, Mini Coop, lift off. The cover's cool. Yeah, the cover's cool. I this boy from Mars cover. Yeah. I love that cover. I think I got the love of God in my genetics. Mind control, like my type telekinetic. How you think I got the fucking name? Yeah, it's like, it's just a bit in my rich. My pre-reverse is damaged. Spit it down, you're bitching, trying to make something different. Let's try to kill this sound, it's sick in the crowd. Dead of being on, beating my chest like a kid. Fucking with that, I'm fucking with that. Yo, that was fucking dope. Something also really important to remember, everything on that is mini good. To the beat, every like he, he right when he when he released that he said every every note on that, yep. every beat, Everything every drum there. kick, writer, every writer, producer, writer, producer, he, uh, like uh, this man is. He's he, everything. He, he's incredible. Like he just like he he taught himself like three or four instruments the mini one, like so because he just couldn't afford to buy beats. So he was like, Well I need to Oh that's awesome. Yeah, he's incredible. That's really no, awesome. his flow was this flow was crazy all over that. Yeah. Yo, I mean, I've heard him spitting. I've heard him do some good shit, but like that track, whew, I don't know if I've heard him like that before, Such but that was some fucking dope shit. contrast to the first track. Yeah, hugely um, diverse. But I think that, but that's him just showcasing impression. what sort of artist that he is. Yeah. And who, like, what he wants to be, what he wants people to see from him. All right, let's keep it going. Yo, let's keep it going. Okay. Another that was uh that was home feet Mo Louis was another, another uh, single another single this was so this is the first single uh that he released which was home uh which just went like it just screamed like this uh like you said like this is like hey look I'm gonna play this this is this is gonna be radio friendly people yep. are gonna be interested so that like when the rest of the stuff comes out people will give it the time of day because this track would have uh, like attract the masses um so this is like yeah like you're asking like what what is he saying lyrically? Yeah. Uh, like rough, like the, the thing about Coop, uh, like I said, like I was saying to you during that thing is that sometimes he's very deep and very ly lyrically interesting. Uh, and then other times he is covering a topic, but broad enough for it to be understand and like relatable. So like in, in home is just sort of like talking about, you know, coming up, 
coming up and then bringing it home kind of thing. Like, so like I've been putting all my time into this. Now it's time to come home. Now it's time to like, you know, this, this time I'm going to make it kind of thing. Um, which, yeah, which annoys me. But like, I, for example, I use off his last mixtape, he released a song called Lorraine, which he did a video for, which is about his grandmother who died. And it's this beautiful track about uh, how like she inspired him and stuff. But like, I, I can't, again, I can't tell you if there's tracks like that on this because I haven't heard it. Uh, but like, yeah, I think this is very, this is a very braggy Nini Kip album where he kind of just talks about. Yeah, I didn't mind it. There was, some, there was some solid verses. The hook I thought was. The cadence of his verses were, were nice. I liked his verses. He's like, he's, he's definitely like, just showing me more and more why he's like really good with his words mm. and with his fucking flow. His flow is always continuing. Like yeah, I always watch his freestyles yeah, going on. Yeah, but um, the hook ain't me. <laughs> Sorry, man. The hook ain't me. But like, I like what you're doing with the with the with the with the backgrounds and the in the beat there. I, I didn't mind it. But it's similar. It reminds me of track one. Radio friendly, safe. Yeah. Um, Solid bars. Yeah. Let go. Next one. What we got? What you want? Is this what you want? This is what I mean by Coop can be really lyrically yeah, that was something amazing. Good. Yep. Yo, that was there. Just in the line at the end where he's just like, right, like he used to say, I love you, but now I'm saying from above you. Like, so what was that line? I thought there was something there. There was something there. What, what did he say? Do you remember? The one at the end? Yeah. He said, um, he says, I still, like, I still so say, say I love I say you, but when I say it, I say it from above you. It's in like, here's the high ground. It's in like, yeah. To we when you know, when you know the person the song is about? <laughs> you know who's it about? We can't say. I can't say, yeah. but like I, I, I met like I, I, I knew the, I met Mini Coop. I, I, I could be, I could be wrong. I met Mini Coop before the, what that is about. Okay, so well, like you kind of watch it unfold in some ways. Well, I, I, I didn't know him at the time, but I, I know. Yeah. Well, yeah, he held my attention from start to finish of that track. De- very engaged. Chorus was on point. All verse were on point. I felt emotional through that track. He, he, he got me. He got my attention real well. Okay. Got so a bit emotional, man. It's a track. I, it's a track that I listen to. I go back and, yeah. and like go through lyrically. It was a beautiful track. track so far. Yeah. Same here. Um, was, track, that in track two. When you add vulnerability uh, to a track, into a song, into your songwriting, uh, you capture people's attention, mm. and it engages the, engages the listener. Uh, much more vividly because you spark emotion in them and I think if you can learn to harness that skill into a full cohesive album or whatever future music you create then I think that's a a pretty positive trajectory in my opinion hey motherfucking man I think I articulated myself pretty well no you did Uh, that wasn't bad Alex Sandals anyway skit and then we're going to go straight into the next track this is intro then straight to the next track hey this is this is probably Australia's largest rap. We, no, this is interesting. I just want to know what the next one. Oh, is. the next one. Uh, so this is a red light. So we've got an interlude from 360, who's like, like arguably the biggest rapper in Australia right now, purely based off analytics. He's he's, he's got the biggest reach of anyone. Yeah, reach exactly. Um, but you know we've got people who are doing stuff in America. But like um, even TK Mazo, who's getting BET nominations, is not doing as well as 360. Um, but uh, he's doing this interlude. He's on this album as well later. Um, and then we've got Red Light, which is the next one. By the way, the, the feature, the singer on the previous song was a girl called Crystal W. Yeah, I think, her, yeah, she, she really... Uh, that hook was really nice. It uh, really made sense with the track. I think she's done stuff on previous albums as well. But uh, this is... this is <laughs> Coop sucks shit. Uh, and then, then we got Red Light. Breaking news. Mini Coop's upcoming album, Lift has come under fire. The skeptics say it's going to be... Quote, the worst things to happen to you, Bob. We're now getting calls from Australia, the 360 to discuss the 360, what are your thoughts? Yes. Come on, yeah, I know Mini Coop. Fucking right, he does. He's going to tell all these assholes this is bullshit. I mean, he's cool, but, you know, he's cool. He's all musical and shit, and that's, that's, you know, he does his thing, but, I mean, what kind of fuckhead plays guitar? Well, you know, he's like... Yeah, 
Chris sound, thinks that sounds too much like shut down. It does. Shut it down. Shut well, as soon as I heard that, I was thinking the same, like, shut down. Now, dun, 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 you can dun. have an instrument that sounds similar to others, but where do you draw the line between that's actually if, Jack and someone's if, beat? If, if the beat matches. So oh. I, 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 don't, I don't have shut down in my brain right now. I have it on my phone. But um, I can't play it, actually. Nah. Nah? All right. So basically, like, because I, I, I can't remember. But if it's, if it's a different vocal, if it's different pitching, and there's a, and there's, a, there's a different beat somewhere, then it's like relatively like you can't be sued for it. I can I can say that it was very similar to Shutdown, but still as a song itself, I thought it could yeah. do very well. Yeah. I thought Dex had a really good verse. That's Grimy. That's, 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 that's on Dex. That's Chevy Levitt. Dex is oh, Chevy Levitt. Oh, Chevy Levitt. Well. Well, Chevy Levitt did a really good job, yeah. and um, I thought the hook was a little out of place. What was the hook? But I don't know. It was alright, but I fucked with the verses. I fucked with the beat, but once, yeah, it did. It did sound yeah. very similar to Touchdown by um, Skepta. Touchdown. <laughs> one of my uh, favorite, yeah, one of my favorites right there. Very upbeat, grimy kind oh, of sound. Oh yeah, very grimy. Dirty, mm. um, industrial. Uh, I think it suits his his style. I think I I like it. Yeah, that was fucking cool. No, I'm, I'm a fan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna announce the next song, but you look at me like I was supposed to say something insightful. You say whatever you want to say. No, next no, song. I'm I'm going next song, but uh, next song <laughs> is another. Do you have anything else to say? I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of Coop as well. I think I've heard that song before. I think I've seen an earlier iteration of that because I, I remember the Jay Z line, which was, "I got 99 problems and they're all Jay Z." Yeah, it's so funny. Um, what does that mean? Uh, it's just it's just a fun line. It's for Grime. Have you listened to Grime? Grime isn't always in the most insightful genre. We've, we've reviewed. Uh, we got. We, we did um, Wiley's. Um, yeah, we did Wiley's album. Yeah. And we're about to. We want to do. Um, Can you do Wiley's album? I didn't, I didn't album. Like I don't think it was a good album. I think it's a reach to call it a good album. I thought it was an average album. But that's just opinion, you know? It's a genre. It's a different genre that I'm not too familiar Grime, with. Grime, is, grime is, is fun, essentially. Like, there's a grime rapper I'm into called Jamie, who's, appa- who's apparently bad live, which annoys you me. You get me, Jamie. Yeah, that's it. That's it. But he sits there and, uh, and he's like, doesn't nerd grime, which is fucking brilliant for you me. You get me, Jamie. One of his lines is, Expelliarmus couldn't stop me. And I just Please, think that's brilliant. Daddy. Wait, sh- Shut the fuck up. What did you say? His line, Sorry, one, of his lines, one of his lines is, Expelliarmus couldn't stop me. As in, like, Harry Potter, Expelliarmus is a spell. And he goes, Expelliarmus couldn't stop me. Notre Dame couldn't stop me. Like, it's just... So what's the punchline? The whole joke that is... Grime is every... Every line is a punchline in Grime. It's just like... It's, I'm, but, wait, I'm waiting for the punchline. Like, you don't get necessarily insightful stuff in Grime. But it's no, fucking it's great it's, rhyme. It's, 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 it's very... It's, yeah. As someone who's, like, super lyric and lyrical and, like, listens to people's lyrics really heavily, I just get around Grime. I just not... Because I just don't think about it. I just, yeah. like, listen. Everybody needs that. Uh, next up we got an eight. Speaking of grime We've got a British artist up next Got A-Hey He doesn't do grime But he's a British artist right, Fun cool. grime But he's got A-Hey he's, This is a single It's got released with a video clip I highly recommend watching this With the video clip Fucked your mom and told. Wait, I t- fucked. Is it, I fucked your mom and told your dad to get a new room. <laughs> Those lines make me laugh. Uh, something that I remember early, early, like back when you guys were AA. Actually, yeah, yeah, this is before I joined, and then when I before uh, obviously before I left. But um, the uh, this is the thing that me and Alex went through because this is the first time I ever s- discovered Lil Dicky is because you guys played him. And you played professional rapper, and we were listening in the car on the way home, and yeah. like, you played professional rapper for me. Then you fucking dig it. It was fucked. Professional rapper, great album, great song. Uh, but Snoop Dogg and Lil Dicky in that song just have a conversation, and you don't get that enough in in like rap when you have features because people get lost in the whole idea. Like I'm gonna record something for a beat, and whereas you look at stuff like Watch the Throne did so well because it was a conversation. Like you need chemistry, man. In Paris, it's like a fucking masterpiece because it's just a conversation between Kanye. What's and in Paris? There's no song called In Paris. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> in Paris. Um, so, but yeah, it's a conversation. Like they sit there and like they'll have like lines across, and then professional rappers the same way. It's just him and Snoop Dogg having a conversation. In this, it's like them just like having a conversation. They start off like verse big verse big verse then they go like a couple lines between the two of them and yeah. they like it's a conversation and that's why it's a fucking great feature that's a great point that's a great point it's on point i like the beat it's a dope track i dig it 
I kind of liked how the album's taken. It's had like that sort of uplifting start. Had like the slower track with a yeah. lot of mean to it, and now it's taken and like a slight hitting, grime and yeah. upbeat approach as well. I like that. I like yeah. the switch up. It's really showing like what that. it can do. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely resonates with me. Let's keep going. Uh, we got next one. This is actually one of my favorite uh, Melbourne artists. So this is a, a guy called Dex. This kid is 18. He started rapping when he was 16. Had his first release at 16, and like just. Blew it out of the water. Gotcha. Great, yeah. great kid. Like he's gonna be incredible. Like I say, great kid. He's a year younger than me. Lovely dude as well. Like as a person. Um, so this is made for, which is a uh, mini coupe and Dex. Second last track. Second last track. He's continuing, uh, yeah, continuing to. That's quite another quality track. Another, <laughs> quality, another, qu- Are another you quality track. Are you my boy? No, that's that's yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Relatively so impressed, yeah. The last track on this is the track with 360, which is like the boop straight and rapid. It's the oh, whole. I saw like, about this track though. This is like this is like no, dude. I like I'm just like, I, I, I'm wondering how they're gonna, he's going to finish the album. Essentially, is what I'm wondering. But like Dex, Dex on that, just uh, like mini he was group. solid. I got some Jaden Smith vibes a little bit from him. Just some James Smith vibes. I got some James, and it's a compliment. They're about um, the same age as well. And that's another reason, um, because of the youth in their voice. Uh, yeah. No, I love the beat. Harry Potter vibes. Harry Potter yeah, vibes. Was, yeah. Dun, 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 All the instrumental. Dun. Yeah. It was on. Fuck it, yeah. it wasn't actually talking about music, the magic, but. That's a dope beat, man. Cool. I, I enjoyed that song. I've, I've enjoyed the, the last three songs. Would you lot. almost call it a jungle beat? Jungle beat of the week. Oh. oh, that's a different question. Did you call that a jungle beat? Did you call that a jungle beat? I don't know. Didn't jungle beat? I read it. I read it, yeah. It's a fucking dope track. Nice. So so do I. You're killing it, Coop. You're motherfucking killing it. Yeah, he's, re- he's, he's finishing this album strong. Mm. Let's go. All right, let's do the, this is the last track. So this is this is the biggest feature he's had to date. And it was like he had a list of three artists he wanted to collaborate with. Yeah. He had, had a three-year goal to collaborate with three a big Australian artist. Yeah. And he, he'd done two out of the three. This is the last and one. And this was the last one That's he did. That's dope. So this How much time did he have left on that list? Literally had like hit his three years. Whew. And he was like, I'm, like, I'm going to do this in three years. I'm going to have three artists I'm going to collaborate with. Respect. He toured with two of them. Yep. Yep. And then he's like, now I'm, I'm getting the feature for well, I, I hope you aim for even bigger sites to get those international artists now. Yo, man, get that Yeezy feature. I was thinking the same shit. <laughs> feature in the throne. <laughs> That's how you finish a motherfucking album. Hey, oh my damn. So wait, you got you three years ago. You interviewed a, a child uh, who just no, didn't. Did, like ah, oh, Coop was oh, actually Coop's probably twenty five now, huh? He's like he's, he's but I'm saying like you interviewed you interviewed a guy new to new to rap. Literally, just that was his first album. He was a he was in a metal band. Right. As a drummer. How do you see the transformation over those years compared to now? Up and Adam's a great mixtape, I will say. I still personally think Up and Adam's is best mixtape. Yeah, there's stuff on that mi- up, up and Adam that I still listen. Does it sound similar or no. different to this? Mm, oh, no. Some of the beats you'll get elements, and you'll see the growth of where he's like producing to where he is now. Where there's elements there, but it's very. I think, and I'd say it's more spacey. It's a bit more electronic. What do you prefer? I'm, I'm liking everything I'm hearing. I prefer. I probably prefer Up and Adam just for the fact that I guess there's more nostalgic vibes. And then at the time that came out, I really, I really sort of resonated with a lot of it. Gave me like slight cutty vibes as well. Yeah. But I still fuck with all this album. And plus, this is the first reaction. So this is the first time I've listened to this album. Uh, and also, 360 King of the Punchlines, but 60. <laughs> Coop, <laughs> Coop, Coop fucking destroyed you on this man flow wise. 60 didn't really do much with this flow. Coop was fucking all over this fucking track. Yeah. Um, Next time you bring your game, 60. You bring your fucking flow game. You think 360's watching this joint? He better be. Yo, Coop <laughs> fucking killed you, man. Nah, he fucking killed you. <laughs> Three, 360's watching AU Dollar, man. Um, so, you know, there's no reason why he wouldn't. 
Nah, yeah, man. We'll rest- 60 well, king of the punchlines, you though, man. You got them punchlines. Um, 360, I know. Do you, do you remember a track? It would have been maybe 10 years ago, and it was... Papa always told me but never with the boys like yeah, you. Yeah, Gosling. No, 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 no. No, no, It was it was like number one for like weeks in Australia. Six years ago, and it was that was 360 song, and that like it just went nuts. Hasn't released a good album since. He's Falling, back. Falling back. and Flying, Falling and Flying, to me is an amazing album. Start to finish, I fucking love that album. Keep firing shots. And man. even like and even at the very end of it, he has some really deep tracks. Like I think Miracle in a Costume. And the really deep one, the very last track, I can't remember what it's called, but it was fucking insane. And he still has a bunch of tracks on there, and since then, he's released fucking trash. The Dropout doesn't have a negative opinion of you. <laughs> if you want to come on The Dropout Pussy. anytime, we would love you. Yo, uh, I'm still a fan of your work. I just personally think that you've, you've just, you know, you've been making more pop music. You've still got the fucking punchlines. You've still got some, you know, some witty lines, but your beats are fucking trash. You've done great things for mental health in Australia. <laughs> Uh, Are we talking legit. about 360 right now? Yeah, legit. sucking 60's dick legit. right now. And, uh, no, legit though, like, 360 has done incredible things for mental health in Australia. Yeah, he, he has. He's, he's, uh, he's gone through very severe depression. I was and one of those like, videos that he posted, like, about what he was going through and yeah. how he shared it with people, and that was beautiful. I'm not saying he's the bad person, or like, well, like, he's an amazing person. I just think his music, at the moment, is terrible. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just making sure that we're all grounded. Uh, and no, it's that. It was something else. He, it was something else the 360 did recently that is super impressive. <laughs> oh, was props to like shouting out. Uh, How the 60s dictates? Like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, look, he's looking up. The 360 has reach, and there's something you, you don't have to do in, in Australia, and that's when you are in, in the world is that if you have reach, you don't have to give a fuck about the people below you. Yeah. But 360 is committed to like finding new artists who are doing well on the low ground, like Coop. I uh, recently did one on AU Dollar where he, he, the more he does that, the longer he'll last. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. He, 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 in my opinion, he has he has an incredible. Dude, he's uh, done a lot for Australia. He has an incredible uh, reputation for helping out upcoming artists. You stay relevant and grounded. Mm-hmm. Yeah, grounded and within reckon, the culture. Do you reckon Coop wants to get that level as well? Yeah, let's talk like about back to, back to Coop. Back to Coop. Yo, like great way to close the album. I love how he started off like bit of bit of pop, had the bars. Even the second track with like the guitar, there was no, there wasn't really a hook on that. It was just straight bars. Back to home. Build it up a bit more, harder beats, the grime, finish up with the more banging beats, like production all the way through the album, stellar, really good features, and he killed it on pretty much every track. I wonder why he put those first, the first and third track, the more radio friendly ones, I wonder why they're well, in there. Well, he still likes making radio friendly tracks, I believe. Like, yeah, okay. But I did, I did ask him afterwards, like, oh, what, like, what do you like best about the album? Or like, well, I think, I can't remember exactly, but he just said, oh man, I've listened to the album so much, I'm sort of sick of it, because he just spends so long perfecting these tracks, like so long in there music or sounds like he does anyway if you fuck with his music we'll put links in the below how to vibe with this shit his older stuff give him a like facebook just support this man because i truly believe he's gonna place in australian hip-hop and he's gonna last all the way i fucking think he's talented as fuck deserves deserves all the credit due to him what are you thought overall thoughts on, on lift up right now um i'm impressed yeah i feel like he tackled a lot of styles that i haven't heard him on yet i feel like his flow game had definitely improved uh, definitely some great bars and there's some good lines. Yep. The features are on point. I feel like Cooper's always found good features, especially a lot of unknown singers that he can just... He just knows how to get the best out of an artist, I believe. The, the way that he like builds around it with his music. I, I truly believe that with time, as much as he, as he raps, his production is a bigger part as well. And he just... I reckon he could listen to someone just know how to shape it around him for them to sound amazing. Do you think he's great at putting people together yeah. on a project? I really believe... It, it work. Well, yeah, when he hears someone, he knows what works. Um, he has an ear for it. He's a, he's a great ear for it. Great point. Great points. As someone who's mm. not really into the Australian hip hop game, and someone who has a stigma towards it, um, uh, yeah, someone who has a stigma towards it. Um, um, thankfully you've you've been a refreshing uh, sonic. You've given me a, a refreshing experience musically, and I'm thankful for that. Um, my favorite tracks are the ones where you didn't stay safe. Mm. And you stayed on your strengths, with your, which is your ability to spit, rap, be aggressive, um, and create cohesive, full, punchy, hard-hitting, but good songs. Yeah, I felt emotion. I felt hyped. I felt a lot of stuff. Right. Um, and I think if you, if mm. you could ex- learn how to express these ideas in more complex ways, um, I think complexity... Uh, I don't know, not always is beneficial, but it, 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 I think it could uh, help with reaching. So you're feeling like the, the way that he delivers everything, he could do it in a way that is 
more complex like he can still deliver his messages in a way which there's more to it is that kind of what you're getting at yeah or? I think what separates the great I don't know what he wants to do with his career but I think what separates some of the greatest and most memorable and impactful artists and influences in our generation is their, is their ability to express uh, complex ideas in a unique way and I was just, I mean, listening to Kendrick before the heart part four and just the incredible uh astute way he's able to express his ideas is something that very very few can do and it's not to say be like Kendrick but it's to say like <laughs> but like it wouldn't hurt <laughs> <laughs> but to but to take those that I don't know if you can to kind of take that approach um, it's something to experiment with but that's just my two cents um, that I'm struggling to articulate very very well no, yeah. I kind of feel where you're coming from right and maybe who knows maybe with his next stuff he will, he will challenge himself more yeah. I feel he will he's the sort of artist that will definitely keep trying new beats wanting to work with more artists spread it out like. alright man Jungle Beats featuring the dropout fucking dope boy whoop Dude. Scott Hudson aka Ezra Allen an artist Dude. up and coming check nice. him out thank you Minicoop for letting us do this we appreciate you and um, you know keep doing your thing Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm.